Finding out you have lupus is just the beginning of a new journey of learning your particular flavor of lupus. What are your main symptoms? What are your triggers? And what do your lab results show? And how do they change or not change with your flares? This is key to controlling your inflammation long-term and a good doctor will help you notice patterns and provide insights into your lab results. One key element that every doctor who treats lupus looks for right away is does this person have lupus in their kidneys? The answer to this question changes the trajectory of someone's lupus journey and is vital to know as soon as possible. So today we're going to discuss what is lupus nephritis or lupus in the kidneys? How do we know if we have it and how we approach it? I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So I've got a confession to make. I love all of rheumatology, but lupus was the reason I chose this field. I've seen a lot of lupus. I worked in a dedicated lupus clinic for almost 12 years and have seen every flavor of lupus out there. Taking care of lupus is what taught me about autoimmunity and inflammation, and my experience is the reason I bang my head against a wall when I see misleading headlines and false claims about autoimmune disease, and specifically lupus. Lupus is not one thing, and there's still a lot about it we don't know, but one thing we do know is if your kidneys are involved, we can't mess around. If you click this video, you most likely know what lupus is, but just as a refresher, lupus is a systemic autoimmune condition that can affect multiple parts of the body. It is a problem in the immune system where the immune system has turned on itself and instead of fighting off foreign invaders like bacteria or viruses, it attacks your own tissues. This attack leads to inflammation, which then leads to the symptoms that you feel. Common areas attacked are the skin, the joints, and the kidneys. The kidneys, which we are usually born with two of them, are part of our body's filtration system. All of our blood supply flows through the kidneys and toxins are removed and sent to the bladder. They are also intimately involved in maintaining our body's fluid balance via electrolyte management. By managing our sodium, phosphorus, and other electrolytes, blood vessels are properly filled, which then allows our heart to do its job more effectively. When lupus decides to go after the kidneys, the subsequent inflammation disrupts our kidneys' ability to do their job. This results in poor fluid management and ultimately, if left untreated, can progress to full kidney failure and result in an inability to filter our blood supply. We know under no uncertain terms that if someone has lupus in their kidneys, they are now in a more severe category of lupus, which carries a higher risk of doing poorly. So yeah, lupus in the kidneys is a big deal. So like I said in the beginning, one of the first things your doctor will look for is any evidence of kidney inflammation. Now, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know I take labs with a giant grain of salt and will always, always, always default to how you are feeling. So what are the symptoms of lupus in your kidneys? Well, in some cases, people will notice their ankles and shins and sometimes entire legs will become swollen. Remember, the kidney's job is to maintain our fluid balance and when they have inflammation, they just can't do it that well. This will manifest as water retention or what we call fluid overload that usually starts in the legs. This is not the kind of swelling I talk about when I'm talking about joint swelling. This is water retention. So if you put your thumb in your skin for about three seconds and then lift it up, you'll see a little divot. Kidney issues are not the only reason someone may have fluid retention and swelling in their legs. In fact, in some people, having a small amount of leg swelling can even be hereditary. For example, I always have a sock line and have been that way since high school. But when we are dealing with lupus, when I see water retention in the legs, my first thought is the kidneys. So what other symptoms are there? Well, we can sometimes have changes in our urine, like it can become frothy, or we might not be urinating as much, or we could have no symptoms at all. And that's what's most scary. This means that some won't have any specific symptoms associated with their kidneys. And so instead, 
we have to go looking for it. Again, this is a little different than how I usually recommend going about things, but lupus in the kidneys is such a big deal that even without specific symptoms, it still needs to be looked for. So if the symptoms aren't always trustworthy, what do we test to tell us if the kidneys have inflammation? Well, there are two things, the urine and the blood. So let's start with the urine. We look in the urine for clues like blood, protein, or white blood cells that can indicate that there's inflammation in the kidneys. These clues are not necessarily specific. Remember, the urine we collect comes from the kidneys to the ureter, to the bladder, and then the urethra. So any problem in any of those areas could show us blood, protein, or white blood cells. It's for this reason, we then also look at your blood tests. If the urine is giving us clues for active kidney inflammation, the blood test will give us clues as to one, the lupus is active, and two, how well the kidneys are working. Two antibodies I've talked a lot about, the DSDNA and the anti-Smith antibodies are closely associated with lupus in the kidneys. So if these are positive, that's a strong clue. Also, if the complements are low, the C3 and the C4, which are just other types of proteins that are part of the immune system, when they are low, this can be a clue towards lupus in the kidneys. I have videos on the double strand DNA, the Smith, and the complements, and I'll put links to those videos in the description box so you can watch them next. And then finally, we have the tests that are looking at how the kidneys are actually working. Just because we have inflammation doesn't mean they are necessarily failing. Our body is very resilient and can keep working in the face of a lot of inflammation. So the CR or creatinine and the GFR or glomerular filtration rate can tell us if our kidneys are holding on or if they are starting to fail. So, okay, I know that was a lot. So again, we do urine tests to look for clues of inflammation and we do blood tests to look for clues of active lupus and to see how well our kidneys are working. Taking all of that together with, of course, how you are feeling, the doctor will then decide how strong their suspicion is that you have lupus in the kidneys. If they think it's likely, then it's time for the next round of tests. And these tests will, one, confirm there is lupus in the kidneys, and two, tell us what type and how bad it is. Because yes, there are different types of lupus kidney inflammation that will impact what treatments are going to be best for you. The next round of tests includes an ultrasound of your kidneys and then a biopsy. Kidney biopsies are done either by kidney specialists called nephrologists or by interventional radiologists. But either way, imaging is used to find the kidney and a needle is then used to take a small sampling to be looked under the microscope. I know it sounds unpleasant, but it's key to figuring out what type of inflammation you have and how bad it is. So it's with all this information that you and your doctor will then decide how best to treat your lupus and what you are going to monitor to know if the treatment is working or not. You take the kidney biopsy information, which told you the type of inflammation that was there and how bad it was, combined with all the other lupus information, like what other symptoms do you have? What do your other labs look like? Combined with all your medical conditions you have, and you filter all of this through your preferences and your doctor's experience, and together you develop a plan. The goal of treatment is remission, but more specifically, kidney remission. Of course, we care how you feel. And thankfully, by going after your kidneys, you also tend to feel better. But we have to prioritize your kidneys because we know that if we lose ground in your kidneys, you just won't do as well. This is not a let's just wait and see kind of deal. When you first get diagnosed with lupus in your kidneys, you may be seeing your rheumatologist a lot. You are trying new medications, so they will be checking in with you regarding how those meds are going, and you'll be doing a lot of testing, both urine and blood. And because I get this question all the time, yes, diet and lifestyle changes that I often talk about as being beneficial in lupus and autoimmune disease can be beneficial when the kidneys are involved as well. However, these changes are unlikely on their own to make a substantial impact on this level of inflammation and should be seen as additive to the medications your doctor prescribes. Lupus is life-changing, no matter your particular flavor. You have to relearn how to take care of yourself and the clues your body is trying to give you. Finding out you have lupus kidney inflammation takes things to a whole other level and is seldom talked about in the world of 
clickbait headlines, and false cures. If you have lupus and your kidneys have never come up in your discussions, ask your doctor what testing they have done to look at your kidneys and what your results show. This will help you understand your lupus better and know what to look out for should things change. My aim is to provide you with the best autoimmune information you need so that you can make the most appropriate health decisions for you and your life. So if that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.